This week, we're learning a really, really easy mind reading trick that you can do with pieces of candy. And if you don't have candy, you can use pretty much anything else. It's interactive, it's a lot of fun. You can do it virtually or live. You guys are going to love it. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. As you guys know, over the last year, I did a lot of live streams where we shared magic, we learned new things. Some of my best tutorials are actually hidden within those live streams. But about a year ago, I had two of my friends on as guests. They're called the Toronto Magic Company. They have an amazing YouTube channel, a lot of knowledge, a lot of great magic, and I will put a link in the description. But whatever the case, they were on the channel about a year ago and they taught a trick that I fell in love with immediately. It was done with, you could be at a party and you could do this with borrowed candy or any snack or pieces of paper or Legos or anything you can think of, uh, but it can also be done virtually. You can do it for hundreds of people virtually and they could all follow along on the screen and you're gonna read everyone's mind right through the screen. So immediately I fell in love with it and I tried it multiple times. I did it in virtual performances. I did it live at a couple of summer barbecues and every time the reactions were insane. In fact, I changed something about it that I think in certain cases uh, is a great variation and in others you can just stick to the original and it'll be as amazing. Now since that live stream aired, a lot of you wrote to me saying, hey, which live stream was that candy trick in? I'm trying to go back and find it, but because there are so many lives and they're all so long, it's really hard and time consuming to find it. So I took it out and I'm making it a separate video for easy access for those of you who are looking for it, for those of you who haven't seen it, and also I'm gonna share my variation with you guys right now that in my opinion, in certain cases, can make this more impossible. So without further ado, I want you guys to see the performance. These are my friends from the Toronto Magic Company doing the candy trick. Follow along on your screen. We're gonna play a little game uh, using these pieces of candy. Pretend that these pieces of candy are a virtual board game. And this is the first piece, the yellow one. And what I want everyone to do right now watching at home is take your finger, hopefully not the dirty, the bad finger, yeah, put, it, good finger. put it on the yellow piece of candy. Do that right now. And here's the rules of the game. In a moment, I'm gonna tell you to move. That's perfect, Jonah, you can keep your finger there. You can be the example. In a moment, I'm gonna tell you to move. And every time I say move, you can move one piece to the left or the right. Can I ask a weird question? Yeah. Should they actually be putting their finger on actually the screen? Actually put your finger on the screen. I know really? that sounds crazy, but do wow. it. Wow. Even okay. if it leads a little smudge, do it. Okay, look, put your finger on the yellow piece of candy right now. If you're watching this on a black and white screen, too bad. I don't know what, what year you're living in. Put your finger on the yellow piece of candy. Here's what's gonna happen. Whenever I tell you to move, you can move one piece to the left or the right. Now, right now, Jonah can't move this direction because there's no candy. So Jonah, if I say move, where would you go? On, only there. That's right, okay, perfect. But now if I tell Jonah to move, he can go in either Jonah, direction, sorry. right? Okay, right, so I want everyone to do this. Put your finger on the yellow piece of candy. Perfect, and now move. Okay, everyone at home should have their finger on the orange piece of candy. That's not magic. Jonah, take your finger off, but everyone at home, keep your finger on the orange piece of candy. And now just follow along at home. I want you to move now. Good, move again. Move again. Move again. Stop, stop. Keep your finger where it, exactly where it is. And I'm gonna take a chance and say that you are not on the green Skittle. I'm gonna eat that. Hmm, or M&M, delish. Okay, keep your finger exactly where it is until I tell you to move. Move. I'm gonna take another chance and I'm gonna say, you are not on the blue M&M. Keep your finger where it is. Hold on. Move now. Move again. Move again. Stop. I'm gonna go for big this time. I'm gonna go for broke. I'm gonna say that you are not on yellow and you're not on red. If you are on orange, can you give me a big heck yeah, heck yeah in the chat? Heck yeah. <laughs> Did we get it? What? Good, yes. Crazy. So good. That was the performance. Hope you enjoyed it. And as you can see, this is a highly interactive piece of mentalism. You can do this over a screen to hundreds of people, or you could do it live. And if you don't have candy, you can use pretty much anything you can come up with. You can use any objects for this. So it's highly, highly versatile. I'm sure you guys are gonna think of some great applications for this. But right now we're going to jump 
into the explanation. Ben and Jonah are going to explain to you how to perform this and also my variation, which is something I added, a little thing I added that I think makes it more deceptive and makes people go, wait, how the heck did this happen? But before we jump to that, guys, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more amazing mentalism and psychology content. So we're gonna begin with my variation. And the reason I came up with this was the following. 99% of the time you're gonna do this trick, people are gonna go crazy. The fact that you knew, sometimes without even being in the same room as them, where they all ended up is a killer. Trust me, try it virtually, they're going to go nuts. But every now and then you're performing for a crowd of people that are really analytic. They're really trying to break it down. And I came up with something that really just throws a wrench in their wheels and they cannot figure out how this was done. So in a moment, I'm, you're gonna see the entire explanation of what the process is and how it works, but you're also gonna realize that at the end, you always tell them to move three times. The trick depends on you saying, move, move, move at the end three times. So the simple variation that I thought of is simply this. I have a deck of cards and instead of at the end, me telling them how many times to move, I say, you're gonna pick one of these cards, whatever the number is on that, you're gonna move that many times. So let's say you pick this five of clubs, you're going to move five times. But all I do is I force a three, the three of diamonds. Now, if you know some card forces, you can use anyone at all. But the one I love to use, as you guys know from the channel, is the Riffle Force, which looks like this. I say, I'll run down the cards, you say stop when you like, they say stop, you open up where they said stop, and it's the Three of Diamonds. Very quickly, the way that works is like this. You've got the Three of Diamonds on top of the deck. With your index, you cut like this to the left, your left hand grabs those. Your pinky stays just a little bit on top of that card as you close it up like this. So you're holding what's called a pinky break above that Three of Diamonds. You riffle down, they say stop, your finger goes in there to make it seem like you're opening it up where they said, but in fact, your thumb picks up in the back over here as you tilt forward and move forward and you actually open up where that pinky break was, in other words, at the three. So they say stop, you go great right there, and as you go in, you just open up back there and it's the three. This is called a force. I'll leave a couple of links in the description to where you can learn other forces, including this one, the Riffle Force in more detail, but basically, I love to do that at the end. So I go, move, 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 all the move, eliminate this, and when we get to the end, I say, say stop, right there, wonderful. Take a look at that, whatever the number is, on that card, move that many times. So now in their head, it's like, I didn't even know how many times they were moving, how could I know which candy they landed on? So I think it's a really, really great variation. Let me know in the comments, do you think you'll be using this variation with that random card number? Or do you think you'll just do it straight up the way Ben and Jonah taught it to you, which is coming up right now. Here is the full explanation of the candy trick. So M&Ms or Skittles or anything that has five different colors, what you need is five objects that are different. So you do not need to use candy. The reason that I use candy is, to, is uh, a couple of reasons. The first Delicious. is that uh, candy, you can get pretty much anywhere. So I can go to pretty much any city in the world and just pick up a bag of candy to do this. The second thing is candy usually comes with a few different colors. So I've taken out five colors. They're five different colors. And because I'm doing it virtually, it doesn't matter what the order is. Um, but I usually set it up in like yellow to orange to red, to blue and green and it's like, it's sort of like a rainbow. So like if I turn around to do this trick, I can remember what the color order is without having to use my brain. So uh, here's how the trick works. You have five objects, this all works on mathematics, but it's very important that people follow along. And that's why I was so detailed in my instructions before the trick began. So you have to make sure everyone understands. So you are gonna be forcing the second object, which is, uh, in this case, the orange one. So you tell everybody, put your finger on the yellow and you say, when I tell you to move, you can only move one piece to the left or right. And now I point out, you can't move this direction because there's no pieces, so you have to move to orange. And the reason I tell people that is once I did it and I said, move, and the person went, uh, and he like looped around to green. And I don't want someone to think you no can. No looping. Because that won't work. No looping. I put, so you tell everybody, put your finger there and you, so Jonah do it. 
And I usually, if I'm doing it live, I do it just like I'm going to do it right now for Jonah. So I say, Jonah, put your finger there. If I tell you to move right now, Jonah, where would you go? Wherever. That's right, because he can only move there. And I do that because I want to make sure he understands. So I say, Jonah, okay, take your fingers off the candy. I'm going to turn away so you can't see. Put your finger on the first candy. That's the yellow one. Did you do that? Yes. Jonah, move now. Are you on the orange candy? Yes. Perfect. Now, I do all that blindfolded just to make sure that he's following along. Now that they're on the orange candy, which is our force candy, this trick will work. All you have to remember is four, one, three. I'll say it again. And if you want to write it down, you can do it quickly. Write it down. Four, four one, three. one, three. That's how many times you're going to tell people to move. So I could look away this whole time and it'll still work. But I'm going to look at you guys. So, Jonah, yes. you're going to move four times. Ready? Move once, twice, three times, four times. Wherever Jonah moves, it doesn't matter. Keep your finger there. Mathematically, he cannot be on green. If they follow it along, mathematically, they can't Can be green. Can I try it a few more times? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so, so, he's on orange. Move four times. Ready? Uh, move. One. Move. Two. Move. Three. Move. Four. Let me try another stat. Okay. okay. Move. One. Move. Two. Move. Three, move, four. Can't end Impossible. up on Impossible! Keep your finger where it is. And I oh. always tell people, if my back is turned or if they're doing it And by the way, I, yeah. uh, the redstone said, I think it would also work with any even number. That is true. Yes. That is exactly true. But this is just the simplest way to do it. Uh, and you can modify them and you'll see why in a second. But uh, if you're yeah. someone who likes to play with math principles, you can start getting play creative with, with like yeah. more objects. And it is and evens and odds, but yeah. this is the easy way to run. So I know that, I don't know where they are, but I do know they can't be on green. So I like to do it virtually. And the reason I like to use candy is like, uh, like uh, um, Spidey said, it's a prop and it's justified to eat candy when you get rid of it. So rather than just picking it up and chucking it away or setting it on fire or something, it makes sense. You pick up a candy and you say you're not on green and you eat it. You, but very important, I always say, keep your finger where it is because you don't want him to lift up his finger and then accidentally move it somewhere else. So keep your finger where it is, Jonah. Now, if they move one time, like we told them, move now, Jonah. So the, the 413, this is the one. This one. is the one in the 413. Mathematically, wherever he was, trust me, this will work. He cannot be on blue. So I look through the screen and I say, you're not on blue. And I eat it. And now I'm going to tell them to move three times. And mathematically, wherever they move, they're going to end up on the orange uh, candy or Skittle or object. So move once, twice, three times. And this works with any odd number. If you're feeling like you need to kill time, you could say like, Move 5,111 one, times. Yeah, 93. Okay. I'm eating this delicious chocolate. And now I know my eyes can be turned and I can say, let's go for big, let's go for broke. I know that you're not on yellow and I know you're not on red. And I pick up those two and I eat them and I say, you should be on orange. And I always say, if you're on orange, huh? I say, if you're on orange, because my back is turned and I'm blindfolded, I tell everybody to say, hell yeah. And then everybody goes, hell yeah. And, and by the way, someone left in the comment, a real, someone left in the chat a really good comment. They said, perfect thing to do at a party. And it is such a perfect thing because you're looking the other way. Someone's moving around. You're reading their mind. It is a ton of fun. And also, and this is the reason why I really, really love that Ben showed this, is it's such a perfect thing to do virtually because people can join you. As you can see right now, people can engage in the chat and say, yes, I'm following along. Yes, no, that wasn't it. No, and all this all amazing stuff, which is, I think a lot of magicians are looking for virtual stuff. I'm going to show also, you guys. Also, by the way, something you can do over the phone for people. Mm -hmm. I taught this at a lecture once and a guy ran out and he came back in and he said, it's my members night at the other club I'm part of. And I called in the club and I did this trick for everybody there with a bag of candy. So there it was guys. I hope you enjoyed that really easy, highly interactive trick and that you guys use it at your summer events, your virtual events, whatever it is you're doing, this works in every setting. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this and I will see you on the next one. <laughs>